to a Step Inside with me, your host, Ned Pelvis. Each week on a Step Inside, we take a step inside of uh, an art or a craft. And this week, we're going to take a step inside of the art and the craft of, of filmmaking with special guest, director Juan de la Renta, and regular guest, Rick's actor, Rick Scram. We're less excited for Rick Scram. Thank you guys so much for uh, being here today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We're delighted to be here. We're really happy to have you here on such uh, short notice. So thank you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Are there questions? Is there another question? Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Um, tell us about Marlon and Me, the 1997 film. Marlon and Me was our first sort of big Hollywood production. Um, Juan had uh, kind of got his foot in the door uh, between the initial I was, Yeah, I was pretty well established by that point in my career. Really? Yeah. Anyway, um, it, was a, it was right around the time that Marlon Brando was starting to get uh, fairly sick, and he uh, kind of made a mad grab for the rights for uh, his life story. I uh, Marlon um, reached out to us and said, uh, we don't support this movie. His camp said, uh, this is an outrage. How dare you uh, well, release a life story about a man who's still alive? And we said, you know what? We're taking a different tack. Um, we're, we're doing a ghost story. But they didn't like that either. They didn't like Marlon Brando. Again, they said he's still alive. He's uh, still, he's still alive. alive. There's no way to treat a tree like a tree. We won't, we won't get into what they said. Anyway, um, uh, we have a twist. You know, honey, I'm no weatherman, but I just want to forecast this, this uh, marriage is not going to end in divorce. Honey, honey. Now I spent a whole time with you until I'm dead. Mm. I'm happy that we're both already sitting here because I was going to call her and I found her name. I answered the phone when you rang this morning, and it was Dr. Goldstein. He said you both have lupus. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I've encountered it a few times, and it's pretty, it's pretty debilitating. And I'm not going to say it, but when your skin starts to break out in blue hives, I'm not going to laugh at you. But you know what? I can say that I, if you really come and talk to me, I can't help you. Just have to, you know, tell this, and I'll hear you out. Don't ever die, Marlon Brando. I never will. It was biopic, biopic. I don't know. Sure. Can we get the heat turned down? No. Can we get the lights like a little? But no, no. A lot of people say that your remake of Big dealt too directly with themes of 9/11. I'd say that that's a criticism worth uh, worth listening to, but not worth taking seriously, um, because I think that I think that was the Hanks the Hanks camp kind of spreading exactly. some malicious things about us. We asked Tom. We said, you know, this is a this is a big movie culturally. People have really attached to it, and we said, here's our here's our plan. Uh, do we have a clip? Big. Oh, hey, bad news that Collins Day 9 11. Anyway, uh, back to uh, 
Can we have uh, new chairs? Can we have new chairs? No, these are the last two. Okay. Your movie, your version of The Incredible Hulk came out in 2007, the same year as another version of The Incredible Hulk starring a uh, white actor, Edward Norton. Um, was there a competition? Um, we, we vied for, but did not end up getting a studio release. Um, and Edward Norton was, we felt was still kind of riding the fight club wave of fame, uh, that came out in 97 for me. But that was a 10 year wave, um, that we felt really swept our movie under the rug. The superior quality movie, um, as per Juan's vision of, uh, the Hulk, more as man than monster. You won't like me when I'm angry. Sir, do you have another question? Another question. 1998. Mm -hmm. You made Le Bourget. Le Bourget. Le Bourget. Yes, this was Juan's take uh, on World War II. It's an important um, historical moment. The Battle of the Bulge fought in the woods of Germany, but um, can we get can we get new chairs? Is that no? This is the last chairs. And you said there's nothing we can do about the heat. Absolutely not. Um, Juan decided that Le Bourget would be shot uh, exclusively in close-ups, uh, mm, in large part onto the lower half. All right, basis. all right, let's explain this first. The problem with every World War II movie up into Le Bourget is that it didn't, it chose to, to sh represent the, the war as with, with a political nation against nation. And if you're going to represent, you know, the true human spirit, the human condition, you have to get man against man. And you have to show... Teach me. I'd love to hear this. I'd love to hear uh, exactly what you know about filmmaking. All right, all right, Rick. You have to uh, represent not only the character's emotions through the dialogue, but how you portray them with the camera. And can I add uh, that uh, it was Juan's decision to write Le Bouguet exclusively in the French that we took exactly two semesters of in college. Le Bouguet is uh, written in extremely broken French. Il n'y a pas d'où soleil. Déjà mon, il est, il est vraiment. Léon, c'est quoi? Oui, c'est Fourcay. Je vais te porter ça va être, j'en suis. Le guerre euh, est terrible. C'est incroyable. Euh, que, euh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Euh, comment dit? In 1999, you teamed up with Doritos to make a legally binding pledge, the film 99 film in 1999. Some of those films? 99 and 99. Okay. Many of these films were quite successful, but some were excoriated. Uh -huh. Tell us about Tits on Mars. Um, Tits on Mars was a, um, a screenplay adapted to uh, the screenplay was already written, but never produced. Um, and it was basically a, uh, a smut film, a pornographic film, um, that uh, Rick, one of Rick's friends, uh, Icy, Icy Cream Steve, uh, had written. Hey, sausage delivery. Oh, for me? I didn't order any sausage. Well, a pretty girl like you could use a little sausage. Well, I'm sorry, my husband is out of town. Well. I assume your husband gives you everything you need, gives you all the sausage to go with those hams? Well, no, he's away on business now, so I haven't had any sausage in a few weeks. Well, listen, you're a real attractive lady. I'm not going to miss words. I, uh, I gotta give you some of my meat in its casing. I'm going to give you some of these sausages free of charge. Well, listen, I don't have any money. 
Oh, well, I'm sure we'll figure something out. Oh, well, that sounds nice. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Your sex education films. We're not done talking about them. Yeah, go. I tried that. Can we get the next question? Is this gonna be an interview or is this gonna be like uh trying to rake us over the coals? Get uh get one and rip together, you know. Trying to rake the scram, why don't you bring why don't you come around together, why don't you make any stuff with all their mistakes, all their uh, all their differences, their bitches? Like we're we're How about we and we're the next question. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what do we want to talk about? Uh, um Oh, hey, you're leaving? Thanks so, so much for coming on short notice. Yeah, you're, you're great, thanks. Just leave, Juan. Get up and leave, what's he gonna do? Next question, please. Get up! Get up, you coward! Why don't you stand up and walk away? Let's talk about addiction, both on and off the screen. Many people found your 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 2006 film No Can Do by One Legged Sprinter. No Can Do. We didn't make one. America loves heist films. Let's talk about your heist film. We didn't make one. Hi, I'm Juan de Lorenza. And I am Rick Scram. And you've been watching. And you've been watching. A, a, a step, step inside, inside the world of film. film. 